My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Saturday, January 8th, and we are coming to the end of the Christmas season. Catholic Church, Christmas season ends with the baptism of the Lord, which is we have Christmas, then we have the Feast of the Epiphany, and then we have the baptism of the Lord, and that is the end of the Christmas season. So I used to joke when I was converted from Protestant to Catholic in that I said, the thing I like about the Catholic Church is we have really long holidays, and that's true. But we also have long preparation, Advent leading up to Christmas and Lent leading up to Easter. But of course, there's always, you have 40 days of Lent and 40 days of Easter. So we have really nice long holidays. But let us begin today, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who were pleased to shine forth with new light through the coming of your only begotten Son, Grant, we pray, that just as he was pleased to share our bodily form through the childbearing of the Virgin Mary, so we too may one day merit to become companions in his kingdom of grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God. And the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your guard against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, the Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faith exalt in glory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high priests of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful, alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea, where he spent some time with them baptizing. 
John was also baptizing in Enon near Salim because there was an abundance of water there. and People came to be baptized, for John had not yet been imprisoned. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and everyone is coming to him. John answered and said, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who was the bride is the bridegroom. The best man who stands and listens for him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase. I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That last statement is probably one of the most powerful statements in the Bible. He must increase, I must decrease. How often we find that people who go into the faith business, and there's a difference between being clergy and being in the faith business, and you can all imagine what I'm talking about without pointing fingers, but there's a difference between one and the other. And so consequently, sometimes you have this situation where you have people where the, the, the church, their church becomes more important than Christ himself. And John understands this. John has a ministry, and John realizes that his ministry is to increase God or increase Jesus, and that the more he does that, the less he should be involved, involved or the less that he should be the focus. And he's very adamant about that. He makes a very good point, particularly in our modern world of Christianity. Many look to John the Baptist as a leader, and he certainly was, but great leaders are also often great followers. There's a takeaway today. Great leaders are also often great followers. In the Old Testament, we hear that Joshua followed Moses for more than 40 years before he led the Israelites into the Promised Land. The Apostle Peter followed Christ for three, three years and made numerous mistakes. I mean, Peter's a bumbler. If you read, you know, sorry, sorry, the first pope, but, but he himself would tell you that. He always was trying to do the right thing and he was always getting it wrong. Even the first step in canonizing a saint is giving them the title servant of God, highlighting the notion that even the greatest of saintly leaders were first and foremost followers of Christ. John the Baptist understood this well when he says, he must increase, I must decrease. The leader of a church should never ever become more important than Christ. And that happens in many of our modern churches today. As we, and this happens to us too, as we go through our daily lives, it is important to remind ourselves often who or what we are following. Do we pledge our alliance to power, greed, and self-gratification? Do we put our trust in social or political leaders or influencers? Do we even hold ourselves in such high esteem that we forget about others? May we, like John the Baptist, be intentional about whose lead we follow so that we can say with conviction, he must increase, I must decrease. And as we go through the world, and as we go, this is Saturday, and as we go into this weekend, and perhaps as you're sitting in church and listening to the gospel this weekend, certainly a good thing for us to remember. In all cases, Jesus Christ must increase, and we must decrease. Amen. God has set wall and rampart about us, establishing us in peace through the birth of Jesus. 
Together, let us bring our needs and the needs of all people to our loving God. That Pope Francis and the leaders of the church may be successful in working for unity among Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace may be established through justice and freedom among all the peoples of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our local community may be a place of harmony and peace, giving each person respect and dignity, coming from our common humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That any in need, whether in our area or throughout the world, may be blessed in this season of giving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Mary and Joseph guarded and nurtured the baby Jesus, we will always safeguard all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for those who have died from this parish, and for all those who have died in the world, particularly for those from COVID, we will may, the, may they be entered into the promised kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the silence, and the prayers that we hold in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we place our trust in your promise. Continue to help us respond to your love, which you make present to us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I have to tell you a quick story before I send you out with the prayer and the blessing. I just had a wonderful man. I'm sitting here filming in the church, and I have the doors open because Mass is starting soon. Had a wonderful man out for a walk, saw the door open, came in, prayed in the church, just didn't bother us, didn't say anything, came in and prayed and left again. That's one of the things that faith's about. He saw the open door, and he walked in. We, too, are called to see that open door to Christ and walk in. May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deepened trust for things eternal. In Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And now, today, Saturday, the last day of the Christmas season, well, tomorrow, the baptism of the Lord, the Christmas tree will be gone next week in the video. And if it isn't, I goofed up. Have a great weekend. See you in church. Amen.